Hey Valley Metal, welcome back to another math lesson. Today we're going to look at changing fractions into percentages. Let's do this thing. Start off with something kind of fun. All right, trivia question. How many sunken ships lie on the ocean floor? We will get back to that in a moment. Here we go. Today's target officially is 4.6b. I can write fractions as percentages. Let's go to another sports related example here. Uh, Tom Brady completed 34 or 50 passes against the Broncos. What percentage is what percentage of his passes did he complete? Well, 34 out of 50, that translates as 68%. Not too bad. Back in the day, I could throw the pigskin a half a mile. Did you catch that? Probably not. That's from Napoleon Dynamite. Uncle Rico said that. All right, here we go. Must know words. Ratio, again, a comparison between two quantities by division. Percentages. The specified number out of 100. When a ratio compares to 100, it can be expressed as a percent. Why do I bring up ratio? Well, we just talked about this one last lesson. And you remember that ratios can be expressed as a fraction or in fraction notation. So all we're doing here is we're just strictly looking at the fraction notation. So that's why it's very similar to last lesson. lesson. All right. If we have uh, 67 out of 100... That's 67%. That's real easy. It's right out of 100. If we have two-thirds, well, that's kind of a known one. That's 66%. If you have seven-eighths, you may recall from last lesson, that was 87.5%. So what's the trick? How do I get these? Well, it's really just a two-step process. You divide, and you end up moving the decimal two places. Let's take a quick peek here. All right. So 23 fortieths. All right, I got the calculator here. I'm just going to do it first of all with the calculator. 23 divided by 40 equals 0 0.575. 0 0.575. All right, so now I've divided. Now I just have to move the decimal two spots to the right. So there's my 0 0.575. I moved it over two spots to get 57.5%. And 58 is okay, too. If you want to round up, that's cool. Sometimes on the answers on a multiple choice test, they'll have 57.5. Other times they'll have 58%. You've got to make that choice. So we just need to be flexible in how we deal with that. Most of the time, we just go a couple of decimals deep. All right, um, let's take a look at one where we're going to go a little bit old school and, uh, or if we left our calculator at home. So we have 12 48ths. Well, we just set that up. Remember, that means 12, the bar is divided by 48. So here's 12 divided by 48. Well, does 48 go into 12? No, it doesn't. So we put the decimals up. All right. We bring down a zero then. Does 48 go into 120? Yes, it does go in there two times. Two times 48 is 96. Once we subtract out, we've got 24 left. Does 48 go into 24? No, it doesn't. Bring down a zero. Does 48 go into 240? Yes, it does. It goes in there five times, leaving us with 0.25. Don't forget to move the decimal. 0.25 is right over here. You'll see I moved it two spots for an even answer of 25%. You know there's going to be a yeah, but. There's always a yeah, but. So guess what? Yeah, but what if I'm not good at dividing decimals? And what if it like goes on forever? Well, here's an example that I did like that. Dividing 12 divided by 42. You'll notice 12 divided by 42. So 12 is in the box divided by 42. Does 42 go into 12? No, sir. And so you'll see that I put a zero up and I put 42 into 84. Uh, into 120 and I did that two times and got 84 and I continued on down next I put it in eight times and I got 336 had 24 left to bring down another zero I got 24 I uh, got 240 then it goes in there five times and what I said here is don't freak out now we can just stop we've done it three spots and that's going to give us a decimal plus, you know, an extra percentage point as well. So if you take a look at the answer here, if you move that decimal two spots to the right, you've got 28.5%. And again, if you want to call that 29%, that's fine. Um, it does continue to go on, but in sixth grade, let's just go three decimals deep, okay? All right. And if you can't do that, do two decimals deep.
All right? I thought that'd be fair. Let's try a couple examples on our own. Here's one that you should be able to do, two you should be able to do in your head, and one you'll have to divide out, either with a calculator or on paper. Go ahead and try these three. Okay, I'm back. Let's see how you did. Uh, 45 out of 100, of course, is 45%. 45 of, of 90 is 50%, and if you divide it out, 45 divided by 50, you would have 90%. So 45 out of 90, 50%. You can see that that's half. This one here is straight percentage when you have it over 100. Remember, we talked about that with ratios. Here, you just had to do some simple division, either longhand or on a calculator. All right, let's do the ticket. These two are your two problems for the day. I'd like you to express these fractions as percentages. Don't forget to move the decimal two spots to the right. You see the flashing sign there. All right, let's get to the uh, question. How many sunken ships lie on the ocean floor? I was kind of surprised. Approximately 3 million. 3 million? Why can't I just find one? Or better yet, just find the treasure chest of gold coins that I see in the movies. You know what I'm saying? Uh, all right, I just put a couple of famous ones down here. Here's the Lusitania. Uh, this was in uh, sunk in 18 minutes in 1915. 18 minutes! That's not long on a ship that size. Here's the Titanic. Titanic, of course, and then I thought I'd put this one in USS Indianapolis, uh, which was the largest loss of life in naval history when it, that was sunk. All right, hope you enjoyed the show tonight. Have a good evening. Thanks.